identify distress signals. Always distress signals. That seem to be the name of the game these days. Whether it be a drill, a war game, war drill, battle drill, or a, or a rescue mission of some kind. It's almost as if, if we doubled up as the Navy and as the Coast Guard. Our ship received a distress signal in the South Pacific, between Chile and New Zealand, right dead in the middle, square in the middle. Came from a U.S. submarine, nuclear class submarine. Apparently they had been doing missile drills in the South Pacific and a distress signal was sent, but there was no longer any radar or sonar contact with the vessel. Our ship, our destroyer, sent on a mission to check out the situation, see if we could find anything. Our vessel went south. We were originally uh, assigned to the uh, mid-Pacific, just outside of Hawaii, but Pentagon sent us down. Naval Command sent us down to the location. First few days, it was crystal clear. Hardly any movement on the water, and barely even any clouds. Our captain was somewhat reluctant about this certain mission. It's interesting because I've been on this vessel for three years while this command crew and I've never seen it reluctant like this before. So I was one of the commanding officers and had access to it. And about the fourth or fifth day on our way there, I got curious and I asked him you don't seem yourself Captain are you alright you know what he said you know it's just a little concerned this isn't the first time there's been a disappearance of a vessel in this area this, this area is notorious for that even though it's not on the official record it's it's been kept hush hush for some reason I'm not sure why. Who is it being kept hush hush by? The government? He nodded. Pentagon, the government. I just. I don't know. I hope we, we're doing the right thing. I know we're doing the right thing, but. Hope we don't get more than what we bargained for on this mission. I nodded. So, what do you think is behind all of it? He shrugged. Ain't no telling. Could be anything. I mean, yeah, you hear about stories about the Bermuda Triangle and all the disappearances that happened in that area, but I don't know if this is something similar or... I don't know. We talked for a few minutes longer, and I relieved myself of his presence. I wonder what it could be, I thought to myself. What could possibly be behind all these disappearances? I shook my head and went back to my post. The next day, we, uh, we're getting closer to the spot, but there's this strange fog bank. A lot of fog had kicked up, and visibility was fairly even navigable. For about 20, maybe 30 minutes, we went through this thick fog bank. Then we happened upon this sh 
strange looking island. I don't, I don't know if it was a natural island, but it was just this strange stretch of land. It was entirely, entirely made up of this strange green stone. Strange green, greenish concrete type of material. All these ancient ruins and ancient ruins. The island stretched for about a mile and it's about a half a mile wide. The concrete ruins stretched a couple hundred feet. Almost 300 feet in the air. Mix of obelisks, towers, domes. They were covered in these ancient hieroglyphs. These strange hieroglyphs and markings. I had never seen hieroglyphs and markings like this. I wasn't sure what to make of it. The place was just enormous ancient and so mysterious. So weird. There was no trace of the submarine that we were looking for. Nothing popped up on the sonar and nothing on the radar. I tried making radio communication, but nothing came up. Captain sent a reconnaissance crew for them onto the island. I being one of them. Searched around for a little bit. Calling out to anyone that may be on the island or to any inhabitants. No answer. No sign of life. Completely deserted, desolate, dark, deep. Towards the center, we found this gigantic hole. Going down into the deep. It's a deep hole. Swore I heard a slushing sound, but turned on some flashlights and had a look clear for a clearer look, but couldn't find anything. The hole was enormous, a couple hundred feet wide at least, and God knows how deep or far, far down it went. Found a loose stone, about 10 pounds or so, decent sized rock, and I dropped it down to the hole. But I never heard a splash. Deep. We continued to survey the island, but all the ruins, all the buildings were empty. Hierogly covered in hieroglyphics of assorted marine mammals, animals, and fish. Even a strange looking octopus like creature. Almost a humanoid with a. It was weird. Ancient cultures, uh, with ancient cultures, there was no sharp dividing line between the real and the unreal, the physical realm and the spiritual realm, usually, and we didn't really make anything of it. We went all the way, surveyed the island, and came back. We made it back onto the boat and we 
made our way back to the ship. As we, we made it back on the we picked up something on our sonar. Something enormous was underneath us. We didn't know what it was. It was enormous. It was... Good God, it was moving. Tremendously. We didn't know what the... It felt like there was a whirlpool forming around the ship. We didn't know what the... gigantic hand fingers and wrap themselves around the ship gigantic hand green skin dark green skin Pure pandemonium. Everyone scurried in. Try to get to the power stations, but it's too late. A gigantic hand. Totally encompassing the ship. Squeeze down. Hundreds of tons of metal and steel. Bent. And broken in two. Scenes of pure chaos, screams, cries, confusion. Tried making it to the lifeboats, we tried making it to the... Couldn't tell you how many men went down with the ship, but... It was about a hundred or so that made it off. Our lifeboats and in the water. The vessel went down several minutes afterwards. Completely underneath the depths of the Pacific. The current began to take us away from the island, but it didn't matter. gigantic whirlpool began to form underneath the men, around the men in the water. They were being sucked down into the depths. Sucked down clean. Tens of men. Screams filled the air. Chaos, pandemonium, death. Every single one of them were sucked down into the whirlpool, down into the ocean. Then, bursting through the water, there was this behemoth of a thing. Hundreds upon hundreds, hell, maybe even a thousand feet tall, I don't know, but it was, it was incredibly enormous, it was huge, it was monstrous, it was gigantic. A humanoid thing, a big gigantic humanoid thing. Dark green skin. An octopus head. Incredibly large red eyes with a pair of wings. It opened its mouth to reveal a gigantic opening, rows upon rows upon rows of teeth, sharp teeth.
deep crew. A deep bellow. Several red eyes opened. God, the thing had like eight or nine eyes. Good lord. What is this thing? I, I, what is this thing? Jesus. Me and the other men in my boat began to paddle. As fast as we could, we started to paddle. monstrosity inched slowly toward the boats picking one up throwing it down its damnable mouth crunching biting consuming with another boat it Picked up in his hands, tipped upside down, and the men went down into the blackness of its, of its mouth. Crunching, biting, enjoying its meal. The monster appeared, did the same to several more of the boats. The men screaming in protest, begging God for the ordeal to stop. Till finally our boat was lost. Quickly we paddled, we paddled as fast as we could. We were getting close to the fog bank. Curiously, the the beast began to dive down into the water. It completely submerged itself, disappearing from view. We continued paddling, harder and harder. fog bank thickened. And below the surface I can just make it barely make out the deep red eyes. Right behind our boat. Just behind our boat. Maintaining a short distance but still uncomfortably close to our boat. Kept paddling and paddling. Paddled more and more. Still, the beast followed us from underneath the water, and just beneath the surface. It just kept following us. It didn't. Didn't do it. it didn't attack or act. It just kept on following us. No rhyme or reason. It just kept following us. Until we finally pierced the fog bank and it was nearly nightfall. Dark red eyes still glowing in the blackness of the ocean. Self-illuminating. We couldn't take anymore. Tired from paddling, we... The current set us adrift. I was exhausted. Overwhelmed, and so were my men. I 
passed out in the lifeboat. But from sheer exhaustion, pure shock. Then a slow rising from out the ocean. The enormous beast staring down on us like we were ants. I passed out. I woke up on board another naval vessel. I was in the uh, medical part in a bed. I, I asked what, what happened. What happened to where I met? One of the nurses uh, came by and answered all my questions. She explained that uh, our boat had been found and that me and my men were all cast away maroon and unconscious. We were on our way back to Hawaii. How many people did you pick up? I asked. Five. I nodded. That was how many people that were in my boat. Could all of us made it? I thought to myself. I shook my head and sent the nurse about her way. Till this day, this ordeal haunts me. From time to time, I can still see those red eyes in my dream. Those terrible red eyes just didn't beneath the dark surface of the black Pacific. Just staring. Stalking, waiting to consume. 